Hey everybody, Tim Krause again. I'm coming to you with an, uh, uh, a video this afternoon. Today is the 30th of June, 2022. We're going to talk about a couple of issues today. We're going to start with the school, the the uh, Golden Dawn School, that thing that they call a school at Golden Dawn. And then we're also going to talk about uh, evidence of integrity issues that are cropping up and exactly how that looks like it's affecting Golden Dawn and its assembly. But we're going to start with the school first. Let's, let's remember that we go by a methodology that is scriptural. It's Isaiah 28.10 for precept must be upon precept, precept upon precept, line upon line, line upon line here a little and there a little. We're also going to remember 2 Corinthians chapter 13, verse 1. This is the third time I'm coming to you. In the mouth of two or three witnesses shall every word be established. So those are the methodologies that we try to use. So here's we're going to start with a new Arizona law. This is exciting. I, I heard about this, and I thought to myself, oh, goodness, this, this needs to immediately get to the assembly at Golden Dawn. This is great news. This is exciting. It is Arizona House Bill... 2853. <clears throat> it was passed the Arizona House on June the 22nd, 2024, and the Arizona Senate on June the 24th, 2024, 22. So they made really fast work of, out of it. Uh, the, through the House on the 22nd, through the Senate on the 24th, and, and signed into law by Governor Ducey. So uh, has a great impact. Here, here's what it, it says. Um, <clears throat> each parent... Every parent in the state of Arizona will now have the opportunity to apply for, that is essentially petitioning the state of Arizona, for up to $6,500 per student per year for educational choice. Is that great or what? So what that means is they've expanded ed educational choice through an educational savings account or an ESA, every child has the right to take that $6,500. Every parent can direct where that $6,500 goes in terms of their education. Now that means that parents choose to send their kids to private schools. The state of Arizona will pay up to a maximum of $6,500 directly to the school through an expanded education savings account funded by the state. That's fabulous, fabulous. Here now, you're not required to send your kid to a public school, you get an opportunity to send them to a private school. That's huge news. Because Golden Dawn has a school, they should be receiving $6,500 per each student annually to educate their, their assembly's children. Isn't that great? Now let's say, for instance, that Golden Dawn has roughly 100 students at the school. 6500 bucks times 100 students is $650,000 annually that should be received by Golden Dawn. That would fund a school and then some. Is that great or what? Oh, but wait. Golden Dawn School is not accredited. Oh, no! Well, how about homeschooling? Wait a minute. How about homeschooling? This measure also covers homeschooling curriculum and supplies of up to $6,500 per student. That's good, right? Except the Golden Dawn homeschooling curriculum is not an accredited curriculum by Abeka. Oops, it's the non-accredited curriculum. And the measure requires that you have the accredited curriculum which issues an accredited diploma at the end of the period of time. Let's talk about some ongoing issues with the, with the school at Golden Dawn. First of all, Oxford Dictionary defines a school as an institution for educating children. Now, <clears throat> there's some questions to ask that, that create a validity or create a, uh, 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 a truth about whether or not what they have at Golden Dawn is actually a school. Okay? First things first. <clears throat> Do the parents send their children to Golden Dawn each day from 8.30 a.m. to 12.30 a.m. or 12.30 p.m.? actually do they participate in the education of their kids? Do the parents actually teach the kids? Because the curriculum that, that the parents purchase is a non-accredited, albeit it's non-accredited, homeschool curriculum. Now the kids go to the school, 
the kids go to Golden Dawn from 8.30 in the morning to 12.30 in the afternoon. Do the parents actually teach the kids or is that Golden Dawn that actually teaches the kids? So you have to figure out where education is actually being, being uh, done. Is education actually being done at home or is education actually being done at Golden Dawn? Hmm? Interesting question. Is there a principal, so named principal, from the church, Raymundo? Is is Ray Aguirre or Aguirre the 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 principal of the church? Name the principal of the church? As I understand it, that's what they call him, the principal of that school. Are the teachers and teaching assistants from the schools? Well, so they have teachers or people who basically in you know they they conduct the instruction they're from the school they're they they get paid by the school the teaching assistants unfortunately don't get paid but the teacher gets paid as i understand it by the school are the students given assignments while at the school that is are the assignments that are given at the school at golden dawn do the assignments supplement the curriculum that is purchased by a becca or at a becca is there an expectation that your children will attend the school what happens if your kids don't attend the school i i've heard that if your kids don't attend the school that you're sort of humiliated over the pulpit that there's a lot of shaming that goes on you're told that you know you're not you're not participating well in the school that the kid you know because the kids are the guys that are you know anyway your kids go to the, all the kids go to the school from what I understand. Now, let's look at what the legal requirements of a school really are though. First first things first, you have accredited educators at a school. You're required to have minimum requirements for certification. You have continuing education requirements to maintain your certification, and that's all overseen that there's oversight by the Department of Education in terms of certification, be terms of in terms of how that's actually interacted with. The certification is actually issued by the Arizona Department of Education. So you, you gotta start there. Teachers have to be accredited. They have to continue education to maintain their accreditation or their certification. And there's oversight authority by the Arizona State Department of Education. Why would that be an issue for Golden Dawn? Well, it's an issue because Golden Dawn doesn't want the oversight. They don't want the Department of Education telling them what they can and cannot teach. That's an interesting issue because if you take a look at what's being taught at Golden Dawn, there are some Subjects that are just totally ignored, as an example, biology. God forbid that the students at Golden Dawn learn that everybody on the planet, every man and female who has a normal anatomical structure on the planet has 12 ribs in the front and 12 ribs in the back, 24 ribs total. Because William, didn't William Branham say that because Eve was take, that he came from a rib from Adam that, you know, gosh, men to this day have one less rib? Didn't William Branham say that? He did. So we don't want, but we don't, we don't want the people learning that that's not true. So they don't, they certainly don't teach biology, which would, you know, give them the opportunity. To, and by the way, that, that means that they would have to learn the curriculum that the, uh, uh, that the state of Arizona prescribes, which includes sex ed. And they, they don't do a lot of physical sciences. God forbid you would study uh, aerodynamics and learn that an eagle can't fly with eaglets on her wings. Although William Branham said that was true. God forbid that you learn any of that. God forbid that you learn that the Maginot Line was actually built by the French and not the Germans because William Branham prophesied that the Maginot Line was built and that was a big cement barrier that was going to, you know, that was built by the Germans. God, bid, God forbid that you learn the Maginot Line was actually built by the French to keep the Germans out, not the other way around. But there are some subjects that just aren't taught. Uh, and and so that would become an issue. You've also got to, by the way, if you're a school, you got to have an accredited administration. You have minimum requirements for certification for your principal, 
and the principal would also have to do continuing education, and they would have to maintain their accreditation. There's also a significant amount of oversight by the Arizona Department of Education. So, so you have to have that if you're going to be a school. You also have, an, an, like I said before, an approved uh, curriculum by the State Department of Education, uh, and you have to teach that curriculum. That curriculum, by the way, would lead to an accredited diploma, where what they teach at Golden Dawn does not, which is a huge disadvantage for the kids that go to Golden Dawn because they don't get an accredited diploma, which means if if they want one, they have to go either take the GED program or they've got to take a different test to get a diploma mill diploma. So, but, you know, God forbid that we, you know, we'd want to have an accredited diploma that would give our students some sort of parity or some sort of equity uh, or equivalence to what other students are getting uh, in terms of enhancing their opportunities or their abilities to go to work for somebody after they leave Golden Dawn. Or, geez, what if they wanted to go to school after they left Golden Dawn? What if they wanted to go to college? Oh, but college is evil. So there's no need for an accredited diploma because college is evil, according to Isaac. You'd also have to have a public facility that is purpose-built. There are some very specific requirements for a school building. They include things like fire suppression or a sprinkler system, fire extinguishers. It includes windows for egress that are at the level that kids can get to the windows for egress. If the door is on fire, you don't want kids running through the doors, obviously, to get out of the school. So uh, in theory, you've got windows that are at a low enough level so that you can get out of the building if it turns out that it's on fire. And and your windows should not have wrought iron uh, grates or wrought iron bars on the outside of the window so nobody can escape. There are some really specific things that you have to pay attention to. Is it more expensive to build a purpose-built facility uh, that accommodates these things? You bet it is. It, it is because the safety requirements for, as an example, you got to have doors that lock. You don't want people entering your school that aren't authorized to enter the school. So you got to have doors that lock when you open up the doors. You got to have, you know, you got to have uh, limitations of those people that can enter the school. And, by the way, your your public safety requirement says that if you're going to have an inspection by a fire marshal to ensure compliance. You're going to have all that. Well, oh, whoops, that becomes a problem because Golden Dawn doesn't want anything of the nature. Now, problem because that just happened recently, and we're going to talk about that here in just a little bit. But the fire marshal showed up recently. Now, this brings us to integrity, because what the fire marshals were told was that this isn't a school, Tim, this, this isn't a school. This is just a, an opportunity to get together and to tutor and to help out the homeschooling curriculum that the parents buy. So it's not really a school. It's, it's not a school, although the kids are supposed to show up at 8.30 and they go home at 12.30. Although the kids are told you have to go to this school, this is the school. Although there is no education that's being conducted at home, it's all being conducted at the, at the church. Although they give assignments at the church that is above and beyond what the curriculum talks about, right? So it's not a school. We, we don't have a school. We, we just have a group that gets together and does some tutoring for homeschool. Isn't that great? Isn't that great? We know that that's a lie. We know that that's not true. It's it's intended to get around, as an example, all of the requirements that we just talked about. We don't want to do accreditation. We don't want to teach the the curriculum that the state talks about. No, we don't want to do that because you know all of those things might be evil. And you know even though it gives our kids a, a an advantage, we don't want to do that. And we certainly don't want to have an agency having jurisdiction walk in and look at every anything that goes on in our school. God forbid they would discover that you built a fellowship hall with the intention of actually, you know, holding a school in the fellowship hall. God forbid that they discover you lied to them during the permitting process. God forbid that you're doing that again with the new fellowship hall. You're lying because that will end up becoming a school, right? 
God, for, God forbid, you don't want to have that. So the issue is, why are we lying? Well, I mean, if we're proud of a school, if we're proud of what we're teaching our kids, if we stand for that, if that's what we stand for, shouldn't we just take the stand and say, yeah, we're going to tell the truth about that? Well, we can't because, because if you do that, you're breaking the law. If you do that, what you're doing is not legal. If you do that, you are subject to sanctions by the agencies having jurisdiction, right? So that's that becomes the issue, right? So th th there's something that happened here just very recently. City of Tucson Fire Marshal showed up. They are an agency having jurisdictions over schools and other public buildings. They rep the, the, the the city of Tucson was represented by a duly appointed fire marshal at the school to to do an inspection. Okay, the results of that was Isaac lied. He told him, "No, this isn't a school. We don't have a school here." He lied to the duly authorized representative of an agency having jurisdiction over schools and public buildings. They know he lied. They're quite familiar with the fact that he didn't tell them the truth. In fact, Isaac told them nothing he did, nothing they were doing was illegal. Everything was perfectly legal. And that they, that that they they and that the fire marshal didn't have any reason to shut them down or to tell them that they couldn't do that within that public building. Uh, but Isaac did commit to installing fire suppression buildings. We'll see or fire suppression systems. We'll see how that goes. We'll see what what happens in that particular thing. Let's talk about what Scripture says. <laughs> first things first, we're going to talk about government authorities and what Scripture says, because that's us, line upon line, precept upon precept, here a little, there a little. We're going to go back to Scripture. We're just like the Bereans. We hear something, we read something, we go back to Scripture to make sure we understand whether or not it aligns with Scripture, whether it's true. Let's see whether what Isaac told them was actually aligned with Scripture. First things first, did Isaac have the proper attitude toward the governing authorities or the agents? he's having jurisdiction. Well, here the Apostle Paul tells us in Romans chapter 13, verses 1 through 7, everyone must submit to governing authorities. Let me repeat that. Everyone must submit to the governing authorities. This is the Apostle Paul speaking. And didn't William Branham say that he only taught what Paul taught? Right? Everyone must submit to the governing authorities, for there is no authority except from God. And those that exist are instituted by God. So then the one who resists the authority is opposing God's command. And those who oppose it will bring judgment on themselves. Isaac, are you listening? Ray, Isaac, are you guys listening? For rulers are not a terror to good conduct, but to bad. Do you want to be unafraid of authority? Then do what is good. Is lying to the authorities and telling them you don't really have a school, is that doing what is good? Do what is good and you will have its approval. For government is God's servant for your good. Let me repeat that. Government is God's servant for your good. But if you do wrong, be afraid, Isaac. Be afraid. Because it does not carry the sword for no reason. For the government is God's servant and avenger that brings wrath upon the one who does wrong. Is the church disobeying the civil authority? Could it be, Isaac, that you're setting your entire assembly up for real, no kidding issues by lying to the, to the jurisdiction having authority over public space? Wow. Therefore, you must submit not only because of the wrath, but also because of your conscience. Isaac, where's your conscience? People of the assembly, members of Golden Dawn's assembly, where's your conscience? Is it okay for you to lie? Is it okay for your pastor to lie? Is lying just, it, it's convenient. Lying's convenient because it keeps those guys out of your hair, so Isaac thinks, hide in the bushes, because it's coming. Okay? And for this reason, says Scripture, we go on, and for this reason, pay taxes, Isaac. Quit commingling your money. Pay the proper taxes that you owe. Since the authorities are God's public servants continually attending to these tasks. Pay your obligations to everyone. 
taxes to those you owe taxes, Isaac. Tolls to those you owe tolls. Respect to those you owe respect and honor to those you owe honor. That fire marshal that showed up, uh, who's in, who is the, you know, the, from an agency having jurisdiction, is he not worthy of your honor? Respect? The truth? But you lied to him. By the way, Isaac, everybody knows you lied to him. You lied to him. You lied to him. Fairly typical with you, Isaac. You lie a lot. And we're going to talk about more of those instances. But you lie a lot. In this case, they know you lied. They know you lied. What you're doing is not perfectly legal. And that's going to be evident to you. Proverbs chapter 8, 15 and 16. It is by me that kings reign. This is Christ speaking. This is God speaking. It is by me that kings reign and rulers enact just law. By my... By me, princes lead, as do nobles and all righteous judges. These people are there because they are gods, because God placed them in a position here on earth. God placed them in a position of authority. And this guy represented an agency having jurisdiction. And you lied to him. Must feel pretty good. Here's First Peter. Now here Peter is going to tell us the second chapter, 13 through 17. Submit to every human authority because of the Lord. Let me repeat that, Isaac and Ray. Ready? Submit to every human authority because of the Lord. Don't lie to people, agencies who have jurisdiction. Don't lie to duly appointed representatives of those agencies. Submit to every human authority because of the Lord, whether to the emperor as the supreme authority or to the governors as those sent out by him to punish those who do what is evil and to praise those who do what is good. For it is God's will that you silence the ignorance of foolish people by doing good. You think, you think that you're silencing the, uh, those people because you lied to them? You, you think you got away with that? Goodness, goodness, goodness. As God's slaves, live as free people, but don't use your freedom as a way to conceal evil. Let me repeat that, Ray and Isaac. As God's slaves, live as free people, but don't use your freedom as a way to conceal evil. Honor everyone, love the brotherhood, fear God, honor the emperor. Don't use freedom as a way to conceal evil. 1 Timothy chapter 2, verses 1 through 4. This is Paul the Apostle talking, and didn't Branham only teach what Paul taught? First of all, then I urge that petitions, prayers, intercessions, and thanksgiving be made for everyone, for kings and all those who are in authority, so that we may lead a tranquil and quiet life in all godliness and dignity. That, that nets it out right there. Do the right thing so that you can live a peaceful life. Lie to these people. Try to skirt around the authority. Try to do what you want to do just because. And, and don't pay attention to their authority. It will come back and you will not live a tranquil and quiet life in godliness and dignity. This is good and it pleases God our Savior. Who wants everyone to be saved and to come to the knowledge of the truth. Here's Matthew. This is Jesus Christ himself. Chapter 22, verses 17 through 21. Tell us, therefore, what you think. Or This is the, the uh, Jews who are trying to trick Jesus. Tell us, therefore, what you think. Is it lawful to pay taxes to Caesar or not? But perceiving their malice, Jesus said, Why are you testing me, hypocrites? But perceiving their malice, he said, Why are you testing me, hypocrites? Show me a coin used for the tax. So they brought him a denarius, whose image and description is this, he asked them. Caesar's, they said to him. Then he said to them, listen, listen, therefore give back to Caesar the things that are Caesar's. Let me repeat that. Therefore give back to Caesar the things that are Caesar's. And to God the things that are God's. Is, it, is there an expectation that the people who are in a civil, civil authority, uh, that they overtake God's authority? Absolutely not. But you owe them the honor that they are due because God put them here on earth 
as a civil authority to guide us and to give us a dignified and quiet, truthful existence as long as we're as long as we do what they ask us to do so that we may serve God because we can serve God and still follow the authorities it happens all the time Isaac Ray how about lying what about lying what does scripture say about lighting let's start out here in Leviticus this is one of the books of the Mosaic law and Isaac's big on Mosaic law tithing don't cut your hair, wear a dress. He's, he's big on Mosaic law. He's big on the law. So, well, part of the law. Pa part of the law. Let's see what we're talking about here. Here's Leviticus 19, verses 11 through 13. You must not steal. You must not act deceptively or lie to one another. Oh, boy. You must not swear falsely by the, my name, profaning the name of your God. I am Yahweh. You must not oppress your neighbor or rob him. Last video we talked about Isaac's business model. The wages due a hired hand must not remain with you until the morning. They belong to the, the labor. Labor is worthy of his hire. Now what did Isaac say about those who left Golden Dawn? reprobates. These people are absolute reprobates. When you leave that church, when you leave the church, you're not just leaving the walls of the church. You're leaving God. Because I, Isaac, I have God. I have got holiness. I am the only one that understands these things. And when you leave that church, then you leave God. Is that true? Let's go back and take a look at Leviticus 19 one more time. You must not act deceptively or lie to one another. Here, here's, here's what's worse. The people that have left Golden Dawn are all reprobates. They're laying in the gutter. They're dying. Are there some that leave God as a result of the harm and the hurt that they get at Golden Dawn? Yes. And our next video is going to be all about that and examples of that and testimonies of that. And there's a lot of that that goes on. But do all the people that leave Golden Dawn, do they leave God? No. In fact, I would say the majority of people that leave Golden Dawn, at least the ones that I've met, they're not leaving God. They just leave the building. Why? Because they feel deceived, because they are hurt by this church. They are deceived by this church because they don't know what to believe. Isaac says, you got to go to this school. This is a school. you got to go to this school. Now, God says, the Bible says, but you got to go to the school because we're, we want nothing to do with the civilian authority. We don't want to learn anything that those guys are learning. You want to go to the school that the church has. Of course, it's not a school. It's not accredited. The diploma you get is not an accredited diploma. But, you know, but we want you to go to the school. You have to go to the school. If you don't go to the school, we're going to talk about you over the pulpit. We're going to shame you. We're going to humiliate you. You have to go to the school. And the people who have left, or the people who don't, boy, they are, they're rebellious. They're without God. The people that have left, oh, goodness, they've totally walked away from God. They're reprobates. They're laying in a ditch. Is that why the ministry is now looking at screenshots of social media, people who are in the church who are friends with or follow people who have left the church on social media, those people are now under scrutiny for who do you follow on social media. If you follow or if you're friends with on Facebook, friends with on Facebook, if you follow the posts of the people on Facebook, if you follow somebody on Twitter or on Instagram who has left the church, you're going to get it in the neck by the church. Is that why we're taking screenshots of the friends and the people who who follow you on, on the the former believers on Instagram? Wow, we're, we're really doing that? Unbelievable! Why is it? Because you don't want to see the situation that they're in. Let me tell you, there's a lot of people who are they're really lit. Boy, I'll tell you, they are living blessed lives. They are following God. They're have and better than that. They're in the liberty of Christ. They're outside. They're having a great time. 
their kids are going to have such an advantage over the kids that are at Golden Dawn. They're going to walk out of their whatever school they attend. They're going to walk out of there with with accredited diplomas. And they're going to be able to go to college and further their education. And they're going to be able to live up to the potential that God put into those people. They're going to have an opportunity to take the gifts that God gave them and to magnify those gifts and to do great things for not only the people around them, but their church. They're going to be able to exercise the gifts of the Holy Spirit in, in ways that are just going to blow you away. Those people are happy they're following God. God, oh, God forbid that you should see that. God forbid that you should see that they're enjoying themselves as they follow Christ. God, God forbid that you should see that they're following Christ and they're going and their boy their life is in the full liberty of Jesus Christ. God forbid that you should see that. What's the truth, Isaac? Don't 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 you look at that Instagram page. Don't you follow them on Facebook. Believe me, not your lying eyes. Believe me, they're reprobates. They're miserable. They're in the ditch. They're having horrible times. Don't follow them on Instagram. Don't watch them on Facebook. God forbid that you should. And, and by the way, assembly members, if you're being intimidated by the church, what's wrong with you? What's wrong with you? You choose to, to give them that much power over what you do? You choose to have that minister stand between you and God? And your relationship with God, your personal responsibility to have a relationship with Jesus Christ. By the way, those people that have left Golden Dawn have discovered that. And they've discovered how great the personal relationship with Jesus Christ can be without a minister in the middle of it telling you what a reprobate you are, telling you why Jesus hasn't returned because you're not living up to it, telling you, you know, you have to do this or you're going to be humiliated across my pulpit. There was a, uh, uh, you, you know, you guys know this story better than I do. For those who don't go to Golden Dawn, I'm going to talk about this for just a moment. There was a family whose, whose uh, uh, grandfather lived in Spain. Uh, he lived in Spain. He was really elderly. The family in Spain had gotten in contact with him and said, "If you want to see Grandpa alive, now's your opportunity. He's starting to fail. We need, you know, if you want to come back to Spain and see him, now's the opportunity to do that." The family did. They said, "You know what? We love our Grandpa. We love our Grandpa. We, you know, we have a family unit here." Uh, we're all about family, so we're going to pick up and we're going to go back to Spain and we're going to go visit Grandpa before he passes away because he's failing and we want an opportunity to do that. We want an opportunity to share with him his last, you know, that, that gives us an opportunity to share with him his last, you know, his last time here on earth. So they did. Packed up, went off on a vacation for a couple of weeks. They were spoken about very badly. And you know what? You know what? It's funny because because Isaac used scripture, let the dead bury the dead. Isaac used scripture to condemn those people. Not to convict those people. Those people weren't convicted. They went back to see their family, part of their family unit. That's their responsibility as a family member to do that. They were living up to their family obligations for their family unit, and yet Isaac belittled them and humiliated them and condemned them for that. No wonder they left the church. We're going to have more of that story in the next video. Stay tuned. Just, you know, because, and Isaac didn't care about the family unit. He didn't care whether or not the family unit stayed intact or not. If you disobey Isaac, you're going to hear from it over the pulpit. If you don't go to the school, you're disobeying Isaac. If you disobey Isaac, he's going to talk to you over the pulpit. If you go to Spain, because it's your opportunity to see your relative before he passes away, you're going to hear it from Isaac. Unbelievable. So what is the truth? Don't believe your lying eyes when you see that Instagram or you see that Facebook post of these guys enjoying the liberty of, of Christ, following Christ, talking about Christ in their daily lives, talking about the freedom and the flexibility that they have in the liberty of Christ. Don't believe that. 
Don't believe your lying eyes. Believe Isaac. And by the way, you better not be following those guys. You, you better not be. Because if he catches you, he's going to take a screenshot of the followers on those pages. If he catches you, he's going to talk about you and humiliate you over the pulpit. He's going to call you out for following them. Because after all, Isaac took them out from underneath the blood, which wasn't his blood to take them out from underneath of. It wasn't salvation through Isaac that, you know, so Isaac couldn't have done any of that, but he did. He took them out from under the blood, according to Isaac. He, he really didn't because it wasn't Isaac's blood to take them out from underneath. It wasn't salvation through Isaac. It was salvation through Christ. But don't believe your lying eyes. You, you believe what Isaac tells you. By the way, is Isaac entitled to consume the wages or earnings of those in the church who work for their living? Last video we did, we talked about as an example, Isaac taking a tithe off the gross, then the net wages, then the net of the business owner. Isaac taking more money out of your business than you as the business owner who's taking all the risk, take out of your... And, and tithes are, are thing, a thing of the law of Moses, right? But, and so now we're mixing law and grace again, okay? So, so is he entitled to that? Is he entitled to take those wages? Let's, let's look at what Jesus Christ said in the book of Luke, chapter 10, verses 6 through 7. If a son of peace is there, your peace will rest on him. He's, trying, he's telling the disciples how to go out and evangelize. Okay? He's telling them, go to a town, right? If a son of peace is there, your peace will rest on him. But if not, it will return to you. Remain in the same house eating and drinking what they offer for the worker is worthy, worthy of his wages. Don't be moving from house to house. The worker is worthy of his wages. What Jesus Christ himself is telling him here is that that guy will benefit the church. That guy will give to the ministry joyfully out of his heart. But he is worthy of his wages. Those wages belong to him. He's going to feed you He's going to, and, and you know what? Accept what he gives you. He gives it to you with joy. Accept it with the same joy. Eating and drinking what they offer. Not what they're compelled to give. For the worker is worthy of his wages. If you're doing the right thing by the people in your assembly, they're going to give you support. They're going to help you with support. Because you're feeding them spiritually, you're doing the things they need for it, you, with, you know, for their family, you're ministering to them. With a joyful heart, you'll find people giving. When you compel people to do that, you think they do that with a joyful heart? You think by compelling people to give you money, that, you comp that, that, that basically that you're, you're winning their, their hearts and souls? Unbelievable. Here's Matthew, 10th chapter, uh, verse 10. This is, again, this is one of the synoptic gospels. It's, again, Jesus talking to his disciples about how they should go and, and uh, talk. Don't, don't take a traveling bag for the road or an extra shirt, sandals, or a walking stick, for the worker is worthy of his food. In other words, because you're a worker of God, because you're a worker from, from God, you are working in God's vineyard, you'll be taken care of. You'll get what you need. You'll get an extra shirt if you need it. You'll get sandals. You'll get a walking stick. You'll get food. Take it joyfully. Here we have here we have uh, Paul, again Paul from his first letter to Timothy, chapter five, verse eighteen. For the Scripture says, "Do not muzzle an ox while it's treading out the grain, and the worker is worthy of his wages." In other words, that ox that's that's doing the treading for you is going to reach over and eat some of the grain. Don't muzzle him. Don't tell him not to do that because he's working for you. He's figuring it out. He's working for you. You know what? Give to him freely. Because he's worthy of his wages. He's working for you. Make sure that you support him. Does that obligate you to tithes? No. That's the Mosaic law. That was the covenant of atonement and works. We're in a different covenant now. But we've got, and that's a, that 
subject for a different video. But you, but you see, what Isaac is telling you is that he's entitled to come to you and say, "Give me tenth of your gross. Give me a tenth of your net." Get, and I'm, and by the way, you withhold the tithe from your workers and just pass that off to the church. Make sure I get that too. Okay. I, Isaac's got a great business deal going on. He's not entitled to it, but he's got a great business deal going on. Now, let's go back to lying. I got off track. Sorry about that. I got off track. Here's Psalm 119, verse 163. I hate, this is God talking, I hate and abhor falsehood. But I love your instruction. That's a follower of God. I hate and abhor falsehood, but I love your instruction. Proverbs 22, uh, or excuse me, 12, verse 22, Lying lips are detestable to the Lord, but faithful people are His delight. Lying lips are detestable to the Lord. Proverbs 14, 5, An honest witness does not deceive, but a dishonest witness utters lies. When you bear false witness against somebody who left the church, they just couldn't handle all this, you know, the message because they wanted to go out and exercise their lusts into the world. They, everything's a sexual sin. They just wanted to go exercise their lusts in the world. What was it that somebody who was having a private meeting with uh, Isaac was told? You're going to be raped. You're, you're, I mean, whoa, my, oh, whoa, and you, you'll be crawling back to us because you're going to be raped. It's going to be so horrible. You're not going to live up here alive. God's not going to protect you. Here's John, chapter 8, 44. This is Jesus Christ again. You're, you are of your father the devil and you want to carry out your father's desires he was murderer from the beginning and he's not stood in the truth because there is no truth in him when he tells a lie he speaks from his own nature because he's a liar and the father of liars Isaac when you lie to a representative of an agency having jurisdiction no 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 this, well, yeah, this is not a school it's not a school no no this is just a study group this is a study group. Of course, we don't let anybody teach them biology. That's the unaccredited curriculum that they get includes those modules, but we don't let anybody teach that stuff. We teach it. The instruction happens here, but this isn't a school. See, this is just an opportunity to study with those folks, right? They know you lied. They're quite familiar with how you lied, Isaac. So I understand that you talked to your assembly about this yesterday, last Wednesday evening during service, and you mentioned that somebody came. It wasn't a sheriff's department. It was the, the uh, county's uh, fire marshal. Okay, and The fire marshal is a re duly authorized representative from an agency having jurisdiction to do an inspection of the facility. They knew you lied. They know you lied, Isaac. No foul language is to come from your mouth, but only what is good for the building up of someone in need. This is Paul talking. Don't, don't de-edify people. Don't bash people. Only the good for building up somebody in need. Does it edify somebody when he leaves the church to say you're a reprobate? I t I'm taking you out from under the blood because you're a reprobate. You're no good. Parents, when you don't support your kids after they decide that they don't want to put up with the lies that you give them over the pulpit anymore, Isaac, and they want to follow Christ in a different way, and you tell the parents, I, man, you must not support those children anymore. When, when you do that, is that for the edification of that family? Is that for the education or the edification of that person to build them up in Christ? but only what is good for building up someone in need so that it gives grace to those who hear. You're not only impacting the person who you're, who you're telling is a dirtbag and that they're a reprobate, you're also impacting what people hear around you. You know that. It's fear. Boy, if you step out of line, you're going to get that. If you step out of line, I'm going to cause you the pain that I just caused to this guy over here. If you step out of line, you're going to get humiliated just like I just humiliated that guy. 
So it's not only for the people that you're talking to, it's for the people that hear who what you're saying to the people that you're talking to. But you know that, Isaac. That's control. Right? Here's, here's the Apostle Paul again in Colossians 3rd chapter, verses 9 through 10. Do not lie to one another since you have put off the old self with its practices and have put on a new self. You're being renewed in the knowledge according to the image of your Creator. Not when you lie, but when you don't lie. It seems to me that, you know, this guy, by the way, <clears throat> you, know, you know where this comes from, Isaac? This guy, you know, just spent 10 years in prison. That was a lie. You knew it was a lie then. You know it's a lie now because I clarified it for you. You will know it's a lie later when we get there. You, you'll certainly know it's a lie then. You had an opportunity to make that right by telling everybody, oops, you know what, we know that's not true. You had the opportunity to do that. You chose not to do that. That's okay. That's okay. I got time. I'm patient. But, but it says here in Scripture, don't lie to one another. That, that's the old self. That's the non... What does that tell us about you, Isaac? That, that, see, that's the non-saved. That's the person who doesn't follow Christ. That, that person lies. And you seem to do it quite frequently. That guy in jail for 10 years. The people who have left your church. Oh, they left Christ. They're reprobates. They're in the ditch. They're horrible. They're struggling. Well, let me, here's what God really thinks about lying. Here, and this is really revealing. I, talking about revealing. It's in the book of Revelations, chapter 22, verses 12 through 15. Look, I am coming quickly. And now listen, this is Jesus Christ speaking to John the Revelator. Look, I'm coming quickly, and my reward is with me to repay each person according to what he has done. Isaac, what are you storing up for yourself, buddy? What's your reward? What do you expect as a repayment or a reward? I am the Alpha, the Omega, the first and the last, the beginning and the end, Jesus says to John the Revelator. Blessed are those who wash their robes so that they may not have they may have the 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 right to the tree of life and may enter the city by the gates. Outside are the dogs, the sorcerers, the sexually immoral. How many kids do you have, Isaac? I, I mean not those that you claimed on your taxes. How many children do you have that which... How, how many kids are there? Hmm. Outside... And you know, this is the problem. Because you lie, Isaac, those rumors are continue to be persistent. They're allowed to be persistent because people don't know when you're lying and when you're not lying. A minister who stands up at his pulpit and, and talks about God, and you've misused the Word of God an awful lot, Isaac. You've misused the Word of God very, very, very frequently. A minister who does that stands up at his pulpit, and then who is discovered by his assembly to teach things which are directly opposite to the Word of God, as you do, as you have done, as we have pointed out in the past, and we will continue to point that out. Pretty soon your assembly members start to look at you and say, well, is that true? Is that, is that really what God said? Is that the way I'm supposed to behave? I hear Isaac telling me that, but I've also heard him say other things, you know, that haven't been true. As an example, the April meetings where you've told everybody, you know what, I never have to invite anybody to the April meetings in terms of ministers to speak. They all call me up and say, hey, we really want to come and speak. Until they get there, and then they introduce themselves and say, boy, we're sure glad for the invitation to come and speak this year. <laughs> so are all of those ministers lying and Isaac's telling the truth? Pretty soon the people in the assembly get the idea. They, they don't know what to believe across the pulpit, even when you preach the word of God. They know you lied. People in your assembly know you lie all the time. You certainly lied to the agency having jurisdiction and their authorized representative. You lied about me. You lie about other people as they leave the church. You bear false witness. People know that. Are you, are you shocked that people know? You're not fooling anybody. Okay, what's next? Let's go back to the school for just a minute. The state 
of Arizona Department of Education is very, very interested in someone who is holding a school by the definition of a school without being without being uh, certified. The Attorney General of the State of Arizona is also very, very interested in that. Now, I'm talking directly now to the people who are in the assembly. When you lie for Isaac, are you compounding the offenses? I want to let you know how easy it is. If the Department of Education interviews the people that have left Golden Dawn who attended that school, they're going to understand that, that what you do at, the, at Golden Dawn with the kids in a building that is not uh, purpose-built to be a school, that doesn't have an accredited curriculum, that doesn't have an accredited teacher or an administrator, th those people are going to know that you're holding a school. Without, without going through all of those accreditation and, and uh, you know, without, you're basically lying to the agencies having jurisdiction. You're lying to everybody else by saying, well, we just don't want to go through that. So we're just not going to go through that. Of course, we don't issue accredited diplomas, but we don't want to go through that. They, they know you're lying. They already know that. They got that. Got it. Are the people in the assembly, are they going to compound that offense? Are they going to stand behind Isaac and say, no, no, he's telling the truth. He, oh, yeah, no, no, no. He's telling the truth, all right. When do you tell the truth, assembly? When do you stand up for what's right? Now, look, here's the thing. There are things that make a school a school. And we're gonna and let's let's address that a little bit here. Okay. G Golden Dawn's school school can't benefit the assembly. They can't benefit as a result of the new law. The school can't benefit from the new law because they're not a school. So you can't say I'm choosing to give my money, my school money, my educational support dollars, $6,500 per student per year, which was passed this year, you can't give that to Golden Dawn. You, you can't have the state pay that to Golden Dawn because they're not a school. So, so Golden Dawn can't benefit from the new law. They're not a school. They don't even want to admit that there's a school going on. So they can't benefit to the tune of $650,000. Wouldn't it be great, Isaac? That's a huge revenue stream. Wouldn't it be great if, they, if you could benefit by that $650,000? But that would mean that you would have to do things according to what, what needs to be done with a school. You would have to have educators, administrators, a curriculum, and a facility that are all geared toward education. You would have to teach the approved curriculum in order to get a certification out of the school. You would have to do all of that in order to benefit the $650,000 per year. You won't do that. Certainly you haven't done that. So you can't benefit from the new law. Now the children who attend the school can't benefit as a result of the non-accreditation of the school curriculum. The state of Arizona can't give you the $6,500 for a homeschooling cur curriculum that doesn't give you accreditation. There is a curriculum inside of a Becca that actually gives you accreditation, Isaac. There is. But you would have to do, you'd have to follow through with the testing of all of the modules and all of the curriculum in order to get that accreditation done. Then you could benefit the kids, but you can't because it's a non-accredited program. And and they're not going they the state won't subsidize a non-accredited program. Isaac lied to a representative of the agency which has jurisdiction over schools and public buildings. Isaac flat out lied to him. Then he lied to his assembly. But nothing, nothing improper, nothing illegal about what's going on here. Pay no attention to that man behind the curtain. Are the assembly members, are, are, are you also going to lie to protect Isaac? Are you going to lie? The, the scripture's full of don't lie, don't bear false witness. You guys, it, obviously that scripture doesn't matter much to you, which begs the question, which scriptures do matter to you? But you've lied for Isaac before, or 
chosen not to tell people what you know, which is lying by omission, isn't it? Assembly members could actually benefit from actually homeschooling their kids. If you guys want to sign up for a, an accredited program through ABECA, which is a Christian-based program, it's a great program. If you wanted to set up yourselves to be to homeschool your own kids, you could benefit from that program. You can't if you choose the non-accredited program and give it to the school to implement for you. You, you could actually benefit your kids. Or you could look outside of the church, find a Christian school which is accredited. You could send your kids to that Christian school, get the accredited diploma, and your kids would be heads and shoulders above other people that have gone to the Golden Dawn School. Because they're accredited, they can continue their education. They can get jobs where people expect to see an accredited diploma, a completed high school education. You know, they'd be able to go join the service. They'd even be able to, to, to get involved in the immigration process if, they're, if they haven't already done that because they had an accredited high school diploma. And the state of Arizona would help you do that through this voucher program. See, the problem is that Isaac's lies are starting to unravel. Right? You, you tell people, oh, those people that have left the church have left God, they're reprobates. There's no way that they're following God. Don't look at their Instagram. Don't follow their Facebook because you'd see what I'm telling you is not true. And I'm going to humiliate and shame anybody that I find who's basically looking at Instagram or talking to them. Don't talk to them. Don't message them. Don't talk to them. Don't be involved with them at all because if you do, you see, you'll discover that what I told you about them being reprobates and what I told you about them not following God is totally untrue. For goodness sakes. His lies are starting to unravel about me. His lies are starting to unravel about the school and the building. Starting to unravel in, in a very, very large way. It's starting to come back to haunt him and Ray and others in the church. Now the assembly is going to be seen as liars just like those around them. If the assembly continues to support the lies, if the assembly doesn't stand up for what's right, if the assembly lies on his behalf, the assembly is just going to be seen as liars just like those around him. Just, just because they're around Isaac. They're going to be seen as liars. Is that the reputation you want for your church? Is that what you want to be known as? Goodness. Look, the school thing isn't over. There's lots of stuff going on right now that I can't talk about because it's ongoing. At some point, it's going to happen, and then we'll be able to talk about it and address it. For those who don't attend Golden Dawn, we'll keep you up to date. Those, I'm sure, that are already in Golden Dawn, you guys will know. You guys will know. Although, Isaac may not tell you everything like he didn't because, you know, based on the visit that, you, that he got from the fire marshal, he didn't tell you anything about that or why that was interesting or, or why that was relevant. But, you know, you guys may not know. You might want to ask somebody outside of the assembly what's really happening. But, uh, but you'll certainly be, things will certainly come to pass and... There, there, things are in motion, and so you just need to understand that that's that 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 is going to occur. And uh, it didn't have to. All, all, the, all that Golden Dawn had to do was to set this up correctly. All he had to do at the school was to set it up correctly to begin with, and he could have avoided this entire issue. But he chose not to. Why? Because he didn't want anybody else involved in what he was doing. He didn't want the agencies having jurisdiction to tell him what he had to teach. Right? He didn't he didn't agree with the civil authority, although scripture says the civil authority is there because God put it there. All right, we're out of here. So listen, all done. If anybody wants to get in contact with us, the end card will tell you exactly how to get in contact with me. We're always up for hearing people's comments. We love to respond to that and setting people, giving people as much information as we have. Uh, we will keep you guys informed of what happens with the Department of Education and the, and the Attorney General. 
uh, of the state of Arizona. In the meanwhile, God bless everybody. Get in contact with us if you have any questions. We look forward to talking to you again. Our next video is coming up, I'm going to say in a week or so, and it's going to be about those testimonies that we talked about where people have been hurt by Golden Dawn, and as a result of them being hurt by Golden Dawn, they left the assembly. So we're, we're going to go ahead and do that video, and we'll release that when we're ready. God bless everybody, and I hope you guys are having a great 2022. Bye-bye now.